Chris Lyman now behind Adrian Martinez, and everybody in this league has been so, so good. Coach, thank you so much for making time for us. Hard to believe. How are we at the second week of October already? I know, Matt. It's crazy how fast this is all going and, and uh, excited that uh, we're playing good football in the middle of the season. But uh, as you talked about, the Big 12 is so talented and so much parity this year. You have to have your A game every week. It really is a wide-open conference, but I think it's going to make the back half of the season so much fun. Now, you guys are ranked 20th. KU is 19th. Game day's headed to Lawrence, and I know you're in-state rivals with Kansas, but with both of your programs off to great starts, how does it feel to really have the entire state of Texas in the epicenter of college football these last couple of weeks? <laughs> well, I'm happy for Lance. Lance is a great man. Uh, been friends with Lance for a long time, and, and they're playing really well, and uh, we don't get those guys till the end of the season, but uh, it's great that the state of Kansas is, is doing exceptionally well and getting some big wins over uh, some of the Texas schools. You know, when Kansas State is good at football, we had this back in the Bill Snyder days, and you've come and it really continued to carry that torch. Kind of explain to the viewer what that area, Manhattan and Aggieville, is like when Kansas State's playing good football. It's crazy. You talk about a college town. Um, it's lively here uh, on Friday, on Saturday. Um, Aggieville's nuts. I try to stay away from it, of course, <laughs> but uh, I know that uh, the fans frequent it, and uh, after the game, it's it's exciting times, and the tailgate lots are packed, and uh, um, it's fun. We've had some great, uh, with exception of Missouri, we've had some great weather days, too, and uh, uh, that, I know, helps, but uh, uh, there's a lot of passion around here for K-State football. How would you describe, Coach, what your team is through five weeks of the season? Well, we're still trying to figure that out. Uh, offensively, uh, Adrian Martinez and Deuce Vaughn, uh, that tandem together is, is pretty tough to stop. And um, we know we have to be better probably throwing the football uh, because people are going to try to make sure that they control those guys. But uh, they've gotten us a lot of explosive plays on defense. Um, you know, we're young and, and experienced, inexperienced in some spots. We're getting better. Uh, but uh, it, these next, you know, Six, seven weeks are going to determine an awful lot for all the Big 12 schools. Yeah, hard to believe it's already year four for you there. Uh, take me through the steps of what it took for you to get this program to where we see it now here in the first month or so of the season. A uh, big thing is our senior leadership, and uh, there's a handful of guys that uh, have been with us the entire four years that understand the culture uh, that we would want as, a, as in the locker room, we would want as coaches, and, and I'm excited about uh, – uh, the core group of guys being here as long as they have. We've we've had some really good stability uh, in the O-line, D-line uh, area in particular, and that's where you we have to be good is in the offensive line and defensive line. And then, obviously, getting Deuce Vaughn. I mean, there's an explosive yeah. player on offense that uh, is a difference maker. And, you know, Adrian uh, coming here has given us another dimension offensively uh, that was different than Skyler. Skyler was going to spin it around. Skyler Thompson, our quarterback the past few years, was going to spin it around and was really productive. Now we're doing it a little bit differently uh, with uh, Adrian running so much. Yeah, you'd mentioned Adrian Martinez. Look, there, we could talk about the transfer portal for three hours, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. But Adrian comes to your school from Nebraska. has done really, really well. What made him a good fit for you there at Kansas State? I think uh, the bond he had with uh, Colin Klein, our offensive coordinator, and uh, Colin carried the carried the rock pretty well himself when he played. And you know some of the things that even Colin did in, in college, we're doing with Adrian, um, having the ability to have another impact player in the backfield with him induces is has been helpful. And and I still think we're gonna uh, see the best of our offense in the throw game in the coming weeks because between Malik Knowles, Philip Brooks, and Cade Warner and some tight ends. We have some explosive guys on, on the perimeter uh, that uh, uh, people are going to try to stack the box to play the run. We've got to be able to throw the football. Yeah, they know it's coming. He's coming off a career high, 171 rushing yards last week and three touchdowns. People know Adrian's going to run the ball. We had talked about the key to your quick start. You talked about your star running back, Deuce Vaughn. Anyone who covers the sport knows the media guides tend to be a little generous. They have him listed at 5'6", 176 pounds. What's his actual height and weight? Like, let's just let's get it out there. That, now. That's pretty accurate. He's he's right about 175. Um, he's just so much stronger. I think the thing that excites me about Deuce is, uh, you know, everybody talks about the runs and some of the catches. That kid is blocked uh, as well this year um, as any back that we've had. 
He's stood up and hit the blitz a couple times and picked up linebackers. He's led Malik on a, on a jet sweep for a touchdown. He's done all the intangible things. And when, you're, when your best player is doing all those little things to allow you to be successful, uh, it just tells that locker room. But, hey, if Deuce is blocking and doing the extra stuff, uh, the unselfish acts are what's going to win games for you. What's he like off the field? I find that the, the, the littler guys are a little more fiery. They, they talk a little bit more. What, what's he like as a player and a person? Yeah, he's fiery. Um, he uh, works his tail off uh, in the off season. He's one of those guys that uh, takes care of his body extremely well, but uh, he's the life of, of the room. You know, the room lights up when Deuce Vaughn comes in there, and uh, um, he's a captain in his third year here, has the ultimate respect of, of his teammates by what he does on and off the field, and uh, so fortunate we have him in our locker room. Coach, with success, you know your name's going to get brought up for coaching vacancies across the country. I know you addressed the Nebraska situation early in a press conference. I'm not going to ask you about that. What I am going to ask you is, after four national championships at North Dakota State, you made the leap to Kansas State. So why do you believe Kansas State was and is the right fit for you? It's, it's a diamond in the rough here. We've got a great, great uh, um, administration led by Gene Taylor. Uh, we have uh, the players that want to come and play for K-State. Uh, we've got a great, great fan base. We're improving more facilities. We've got a brand new indoor that we're opening up here uh, around Thanksgiving. Um, all the pieces are in place. We just got to continue to recruit the right kind of guys that fit our system and fit our program. But uh, uh, we've got tremendous support here. Lastly, Coach, you're joining us via FaceTime. How many text messages have you been getting during this interview? <laughs> Well, I have uh, our uh, Kenny Lanouz, our sports information director's phone, so he's the one that's getting all the text messages. Uh, but it's going off quite a bit, I can tell. Your, your poise in the pocket's been remarkable. I can see you getting in there and scrolling up on him. Just like, show, show your team this video. Like, guys, you cannot lose concentration on live TV. You've, you've been great. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.